Hello, I'm Dennis Laguerre. I'll be teaching at FDIC 2021 this year on Thursday the 5th at 3.30 p.m. I'll be presenting the big four of handline attack package design. We're going to talk about nozzles, hose construction, hose size, and pump handle outlet implications regarding reading pressures. First, it's very important to know this is more complex than it seems, but simplicity pays off. Now, everybody who's a forcible entry instructor knows the difference between a Halligan and a Hooligan and which one's best in class. The Halligan's obviously the superior tool to the forcible entry instructor, and there's many weaknesses with the Hooligan tool. The same is true with those and nozzles. There's clear distinctions, but less people know the details. And these details pay off in better life preservation through application of water on the fire ground and better property pro preservation. So let's go over a few things about nozzle design real quick, right? You know, really heavy nozzles are going to affect the way you apply water on the fire ground. You don't want a very heavy nozzle. How much reaction force? Can you keep the bale open and flow and move? The velocity of the stream itself is 100 PSI, 75 PSI, or 50 PSI ideal velocities for applying streams on fire grounds. What's the pros and cons of these different velocities, right? And then a target flow. How high does your target flow need to be? Should it be 200 gallons a minute? Should it be 150 gallons a minute? What's the industry standards? Where are the thoughts uh, in those practices today, right? Hose construction itself. There's several types of materials used, nylon, polyester, different weaves, and then there's different construction types. There's two-piece construction types where you have an extruded nitrile tube covered by a woven jacket. There's the more traditional three-piece construction type, outer jacket, rubber liner, adhes to an inner jacket, right? There's even different types of extrusions, thermal polyurethane versus rubber nitrile. What are the pros and cons? Why are there these different construction types? You know, uh, are some more robustly constructed than others? How is the standard picking this up? Now, once we have our target flow and our nozzle pressure and our reaction force and our velocity picked, we have to decide what hose size we're gonna deliver this through, right? And for example, these three two and a half inch products, right? They're all sold as two and a half, but they all have slightly different internal diameters. How does that affect how fast the water is traveling through it and whether kinks will wash out or not. What's the tube velocity, which is a ratio between how much water is traveling through the hose and how big the hose is itself. And what's ideal tube velocity? What are we looking for? What's proper friction loss? Having extremely low friction loss is not always a positive thing. You want adequate friction loss. Then the system weight itself. Are you carrying around hose that's just too big for the flows that you're, that you're developing? I really like this inch and an eighth tip size, the 265 gallons a minute at 50 PSI. Fairly manageable nozzle reaction for the large attack package at 99 pounds, but does it really need to go on two and a half inch hose? Maybe should it go on two and a quarter inch hose? Yes, two and a quarter inch hose does exist and it was purposely built for the inch and an eighth tip, in my opinion. I was involved in helping develop this hose size, right? Ultimately, the nozzle pressure is also the back pressure and the surface area inside a two and a quarter inch hose is different than the surface area inside one of these big two and three quarter inch hoses that are sold in two and a half. So maybe we have to stiffen up the design so we can get the nozzle bite far out so the nozzle man or nozzle woman can properly map the advance. So even the stiffness of the weave and how many square inches are inside the diameter of the hose here in the last 36 inches means something. Right, it's very important. How about the last 72 inches and the counterbalance and how much weight of the water's in there? We'll discuss that as well. So surface area, back pressure, system weight, the nozzle bite, and then of course the pump panel itself. Are you buying gauges that are easy to read? Are the pressure pickups placed properly? Is the plumbing clean? Do you have everything going through a foam loop? What's the problems with that? Should you be specking flow meters? All of those things are critical to spec and lay out proper handline attack packages for your fire department. And once you get this down done correctly, 
and you get consistent fire streams developed and you get a consistent friction loss and you buy your hose on spec and you spec your apparatus correctly, you will see a huge return on this investment and in knowledge and understanding you gain. So if you don't understand everything that I'm talking about or you want to learn more or maybe you even want to come network with me and I'm totally open to learning from my students as well as we've made huge progress it's specifically in the hose industry making sure they understand the end product user and how they can help us do our jobs better also several nozzle manufacturers have gone to very simple lightweight robust fixed orifice fog and smoothbore nozzles designs they've spent a lot of money uh, reaching out and working with the fire service and now we're having a lot of apparatus manufacturers do the same thing with pump panel designs and pickups and flow meters so this is a renaissance as far as i'm concerned and we're headed towards having the halligan of handline attack packages in every fire department in the nation and it starts with knowledge and understanding so please again join me for the big four of handline attack package design thursday the 5th in august at 3 30. see you there